Hi everyone, welcome back to Service and Sell once again. I hope all of you are taking good care of yourself, you're having enough rest, you're eating well and you're drinking lots of water because in this period of time it is so important for all of us to take good care of our immune system. So for service this week, there is a passage of scripture that God has led me to in my time of prayer and I want to direct your attention to the scripture that is found in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 19. Verse 13, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? he asked. Who do you say I am? Verse 16, Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades or hell will not overcome it. Now, I want, to, uh, well, I want us to focus on verse 18. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Now, a lot of people have the misconception or they translate it wrongly. Uh, they just read it literally, and they think that the rock that Jesus will build the church on is referring to Peter, meaning the church will be built on Peter. Now, I understand that Peter plays a very big part in the entire Bible. In fact, in the whole kingdom of God, uh, from back then to what it is today, he's definitely one of the key person, even among the 12 disciples. And so, he, he is a very important person. He has contributed so much. But what Jesus was saying here is not that the church will be built on Peter and Peter is the rock. This is not what he means. Now, the reason why people translate it wrongly, because the Greek word for Peter is petros, and it means pebble or small stone, while the word rock is translated in, in Greek, it is petra. So, petros, this small pebble, is Peter, and rock is petra, which means a big rock or a huge boulder. So when Jesus said, on this rock, I will build my church, he's referring to the revelation that Peter received from the Father in heaven. Because Peter answered Jesus correctly when he said in verse 16, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. Now, as I was praying for this, I am directed to share with all of you this particular part and to explain it to you and, and, and take my time to really help you to understand. It's because our entire Christian walk with God relies on our revelation on who Jesus is first and foremost. When we understand and when we recognize that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of the living God, not the dead God, but the son of the living God. When we really understand who Jesus is in our life, that is when we are able to fully grasp and fully receive all the things that Jesus say he has given to us or he has called us to be or, or he has promised us. Now, this is again so important and I am taking a bit more time to, to emphasize on this is because a lot of times we call the name of the Lord, but we don't understand who he is. We might know theoretically, okay, you know, pastor preached that Jesus is the Messiah. Yeah, I know that he is the son of God you know, he came to die for us on the cross. We kind of know this knowledge, but it does not sink into our heart and let it be a strong revelation and become the identity for all of us. And I want to take this time to focus on this. It's because I want all of us, the younger we get this, 
the more our Christian walk is going to be so powerful and so exciting. So this revelation is about the fact that Peter realized that Jesus is the Messiah, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. So now I want to quote another two scriptures for all of you about what God, what Jesus has actually called us to be. And and in his point of view, in, in God's point of view, who are we really? I want to bring us to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Once you were a people, once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Do you know that God has called us to be His chosen people? He has first chosen us and He has called us to be a royal priesthood. Now, royal priesthood simply means that all of us are like priests, not just you know, Pastor Daniel or Pastor Deborah or the people working full-time, but all of us are called to be priests. And that means we are supposed to stand in between God and man. And we are the person in between that helps to connect our friends, the people who do not know Christ yet, connect them to God. We are the priest that stands in between both parties. That's how important it is for us to realize this. And, and it also says here that we are called to be a holy nation. We are holy, guys. We are set apart. We are not just like everyone else. We are not just like the world. We are not supposed to have the same mindset as everyone else. Just because the world or bosses or majority of people does things a certain way or think in a certain way or behave in a certain way does not mean that we uh, we should be doing the same thing or we should adopt their same ways. We are different. We are a holy nation. And we are God's special possession. That's how precious each and every one of us are. That God would call us to be His special possession. Now, I'm not sure about you, but when I hear all these things, I get really excited and my faith has increased by many, many fold. And not only that, I want to uh, let this become a big revelation for me and and when it sinks in it becomes my identity that is when i can walk differently i can talk differently i don't have to be defeated like many other people out there who does not know god let me read for all of us uh, another scripture as well that is found in deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 2 and this is god speaking through moses to the children of israel Verse 2, For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. Out of all the people on the face of the earth, the Lord has chosen you to be His treasured possession. We are God's treasured possession, guys. That's how precious you and I are in God's eyes. Take your time. And really meditate upon this and let it sink in and understand what it means. This is who you are. We are not just an ordinary person. We are not just uh, another number in the statistics. We are not just that one out of the seven billion people. We are not just a small little drop on earth. We matter so much to God that God would consider us and call us to be His treasured possession. We are literally the apple in God's eyes. That is why it's so important for us to live a good life, to live a godly life, and bring glory to God in all the things that we do, all the words that we say, and every aspect of our life. So I want to encourage all of you right now to take some time, let all of this sink in, and even more so, Continue to do your Bible study. If you have not started on the full Bible reading plan together with the rest of us, 
in Generation 412, I encourage you to check with your cell leaders and start on it. Read the Bible together so that you will really understand what else God has called us to be and how special are we in the eyes of God. So in your cell groups right now, I want you to share what this means to you now that you know how precious you are to God. Share with each other in your cell group and uh, let this be an amazing time that we get to understand more and live our life so differently now that we know this. Okay, so let me just pray for all of you and I'm going to believe that you're going to have a great time sharing with all the rest of your members in cell too. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for everything that you have done for us on the cross and everything that you have called us and given to us, Lord. We thank you for all these blessings. We thank you that you have opened up our eyes today and, and our ears, Lord, to hear that how much you love us, how much you treasure us, and how special we are, and how much you have set us apart, Lord, and how much you have called us to be a group of holy people. So we thank you, Lord. And even in this time, as we recognize this, as we share with each other what this means, Lord, help us to see more and more and understand more and more about you and also understand more and more about who we are in your eyes and uh, who you have created us to become, Lord, as we share with each other. And let this cell be an amazing time together, Lord. Bless our fellowship. Let us continue to walk strong in you and keep us safe, Lord. Let this be done in Jesus' name we ask and we pray. Amen. God bless all of you. Uh, keep in touch. Have a great time in cell, okay? I love you.